Hi everyone, my name is Carrie and I am the lead animal care specialist here at Habitat Africa the Forest at Brookfield Zoo. Uh, we were going to be talking about sloth bears today, um, but like many of our other local residents, we've experienced some flooding here at the zoo. So while our crews are busy working with um, some flood cleanup, we changed track a little bit and we are going to talk to you today about our Red River hogs. Um, so if you're still interested in learning about bears, we're going to be on Instagram at 2 o'clock talking about our brown bears, um, but we're going to postpone talking about sloth bears for a little bit while our crews are busy cleaning up. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you guys about our Red River Hogs. We have five Red River Hogs here at Brookfield Zoo, um, and what you are seeing here today are our female group, um, our three females. We have uh, Geraldine, Eliza, and Charlotte. And um, then we do have two males that are in another area of the zoo. Um, they're in our Habitat Africa Savannah area in the same habitat as our Nyala. So as you can see, these pigs, we, well, they're related to pigs. We often call them pigs, but they are hogs. Um, they spend a large portion of their day foraging. Um, in their native habitats, they're actually uh, much more sedentary during the day. They're more active in the evening time. Um, and that is because it's a little bit safer for them to go out under the cover of darkness. But because they're protected here um, at the zoo, they're much more comfortable being out in the open during the daytime. So they spend significant parts of their day foraging. Um, Typically, they would be foraging on grasses and roots and fruits. Um, if they come across carrion, they will eat carrion, um, and they'll also eat insects. So here at the zoo, what we offer to them is um, a grass hay that makes up a big bulk of their diet, and then they also get um, a pelleted grain ration um, that's fed out twice a day and then they also get a variety of produce. They get different types of produce that rotate through from our commissary staff each day. Um, so I'm going to be tossing to them some root vegetables. We also rotate um, the types of root vegetables that they get each day. Um, so today they're getting jicama, um, which is sort of a tangy root vegetable. <laughs> Pardon my arm here, there's a roof overhang. And so these Red River Hogs are native to um, Western and Central Africa. They, uh, they occupy a number of different habitat types. So they're found in um, forests and savannas, um, even swamps. and. Um, they're called red river hogs because they like to um, they like to be near water. There is a, a body of water in Africa called the Red River, and that actually doesn't have anything to do with the naming of these hogs. The red comes from their red coloring, and river is because they are found near bodies of water. Um, they do like to wallow when it gets warm. Um, they uh, sometimes come into our barns at the end of the day looking like swamp monsters because they're all covered in mud. So that is something that they really enjoy, both to cool off and also then to protect themselves from flies and other pests. So this is a, um, a small family group. Charlotte and Geraldine are sisters. They were born in the same litter. Um, and then Eliza is Charlotte's offspring. Um, and then Eliza's brother is um, being housed with her dad over at the Habitat Africa Savannah area. So they do live in family groups. Um, typically there's one dominant male in the family group and then um, the rest of the group is made up of other um, smaller families um, of a mother with uh, different ages of offspring. So they can be found in groups of up to 30 individuals, um, but 
smaller groups are more typical. Um, groups of Red River Hogs are called sounders, um, and that's because as they travel through um, the deep brush, they make lots of um, little squeaks and grunts so that they can stay in contact with each other and know where each other are. Um, they do make sort of alarm calls if they feel threatened and um, very, very young little hoglets, when they hear that noise, will sort of crouch and freeze and just hide. But the older hogs, their primary defense is to run and flee. Um, if they do become cornered, they can become quite aggressive and they will aggressively defend themselves. Um, their major predators are lions, hyenas, leopards, and then even pythons will take some uh, juveniles. And then of course humans um, also poach these animals for a food source. So were any of the Red River hogs born here? Yes, Eliza, who is the youngest, was born here. She's the one that's all the way on what is my right. Um, I'm, I'm realizing that is poor perspective for you all. Um, she's closest in the front right at the moment. Um, so she's the youngest of the three that we have here. Um, she's about three years old. Why are the males and the females separated? Um, they're separated right now because um, we do not currently have a breeding recommendation from the Species Survival Program. So um, it, it is actually mutually beneficial because then um, we get to hold some animals that are sort of um, on hold for breeding right now and then we also get to um, have an expanded exhibit space. So we're able to share these with our guests in two different locations. How can you tell them apart? Um, Geraldine has the darkest face. Um, so she's the one sort of passing behind the tree right now. So she has a much darker face than the other two. Um, Charlotte and Eliza are very similar, actually. Um, right now, Eliza has groomed one of the ear tassels off of Charlotte, so that's, that's sort of an easy indicator at the moment, but that is not a permanent feature. Um, Charlotte is still just slightly bigger than Eliza, which is really only a helpful ID when they're standing next to each other. Um, but Charlotte also does have um, a small scar on her thigh, and so that also is helpful for us to tell those two apart. So why do they have ear tassels? Uh, because they're fancy. <laughs> um, I, I actually don't know the purpose of the ear tassel. Um, if I were to wager a guess, it would be you know to make them look bigger and more intimidating when they need to. Um, but I, I don't actually know the true um, reason that they have developed that ear tassel. Can they be different shades of red? They can, they can. Um, but, you know, in, in general, it's more of like that russet color, that rusty color. So I know you said that the males are in with the Nyala. So in the wild, would they spend time with other species? They would. Um, because these uh, red river hogs occupy a number of different habitats, um, there's actually quite a large range of other animals that they would um, live alongside in their native habitats. What are their closest relatives? Um, other hog species would be most closely related. Um, they, you know, they're they're loosely related to a domestic pig. Um, they all fall under that Suidae family. Um, so the closest then, you know, in their native habitats would be the bush pig, which is found uh, further east in Africa. Are they related at all to warthogs? They, they again are loosely related to warthogs. They're all in that Suidae family. Are they good diggers? Would they be able to dig under the fence? They are good diggers. Um, 
We do have to be cautious with all of um, our habitats here at the zoo. Um, we have dig proofing in all of their habitats um, and that is where like the um, there's added uh, perimeter fencing below ground level to prevent them from digging underneath a fence. They actually use their noses for digging and um, when they're motivated to they are quite efficient at digging. Do they have a good sense of smell? They do. I, my guess is that that is um, their primary sense um, because that is what they use to find food. Um, like I said, they, they rely very heavily on roots and so they use their sense of smell to help locate those roots underground. What do they feel like? Their coat is somewhat wiry. Um, it, it's probably very similar to a wire-haired dog if you have gotten the opportunity to feel a wire-haired dog. Is there a purpose for the stripe on their back? I don't know. Um, it do, That also, um, it does go pilo erect when they are feeling uh, threatened, which means that there are like small muscles around the follicle that make that hair stand up higher when they're fe feeling threatened. So um, it just makes them look a little bit bigger and more intimidating. What's the difference between pigs and hogs? I, I don't know. Um, I mean, generally speaking, pigs are domesticated and hogs are not, but I don't know that that is um, a true distinguishing feature. Can you talk a little bit more about what kinds of vocalizations they make? Um, they make a number of different vocalizations. Um, the most common is sort of like a little squeak that they make. Um, and that's sort of a contact call. Like if they can't see each other, they'll make that squeaking sound a lot. Um, so they kind of keep in touch with each, with each other. Um, but they also do then grunt. Um, and I've heard the males kind of bellow. Um, if they're responding aggressively, they'll make sort of a bellowing noise. Um, and they, they do scream. Um, <laughs> It's something that we sometimes see here in a zoo setting. Um, if they're hungry and we're not feeding them quickly enough, they'll scream at us. Um, and it's a really, really awful noise. So um, we really do our best to um, acclimate them to a routine in which we are avoiding uh, initiating that noise from them. How long do they live? Uh, typically they live into their upper teens. Um, they can reach into their early 20s, but that is more rare. So upper teens is what is typical. Is there anywhere that they can swim in their habitat? No, we do provide wallows. Um, and in the, um, in the habitat over at uh, Habitat Africa Savannah, there is a large like wading pool, but um, it's not deep enough for them to be able to swim. Do they always stay outside or do they have a uh, behind the scenes area? Yeah, they all have um, an indoor barn that they can go into um, in the evenings. Um, and then if it's below if it's below 40 degrees, we always give them access to go indoors if they choose to. Um, and if it's below 35, then they get locked indoors because at that point it's a little too cool for them. Um, and we would run into issues with them like losing weight and that sort of thing because they don't they don't have the metabolism to be able to uh, withstand temperatures that cool. How fast can they run? Faster than me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't I don't actually know miles per hour how quickly they can run, but they they are quite fast um, for short distances of time. How old are all of the hogs that are here at Brookfield Zoo? Um, so Geraldine and Charlotte, like I said, are litter mates. So they were born from the same litter. They are seven years old. Um, and then Eliza and her brother Hamilton, who's over in the Savannah area, are both three. And then little B, who is our, our older male, is 16. Oh, 
So he's getting up there in age. Yeah, he he's our he's our old geriatric man. Granddaddy hog. Um, let's see. Can you remind us again what they eat? Um, primarily they eat grasses. That makes up the bulk of um, their diet. And they also will dig up roots. They'll eat fruits if they can find them. Um, they're pretty opportunistic. Um, so they'll eat any sort of produce that they can find. Um, and they also will eat um, carrion or dead animals if they encounter them. Um, or um, insects. They'll, they'll opportunistically eat insects also. So when these guys are born, um, the mother makes a big, huge nest for them to uh, be born in. Um, so when Eliza and Hamilton were born, we knew that something was going on because Charlotte had buried herself in um, some straw that we had provided to the point where we could no longer see her. So um, these hogs are about 150 pounds, so that's a pretty substantial nest for her to have been completely um, hidden. So that is something they would do in their native habitats also. They just make like this big huge nest to give birth in. Um, and then when the uh, young are born, they're about four pounds, and they have um, really cute little um, stripe patterns on them. So they're sort of like a tan and black striped pattern. Oh, we have a good graphic here to show you guys. So that striped pattern only lasts for about the first month um, and then it starts to transition to the adult coloring. So by the time they're about two months old, they have um, all of their adult coloring. They develop very quickly. They're weaned by the time they're like two to four months old. So at that point, they're fairly independent other than just protection from their mothers. What are their favorite treats? Um, fruit, for sure, is a favorite treat. Um, they also, here at the zoo, they also really love um, peanut butter. So if we're trying to medicate an animal, we'll hide it in peanut butter because um, they'll deal with the bad taste of the medicine in order to get to the peanut butter. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, I can't tell you how much we appreciate your continued support. Uh, Red River Hogs are available as an animal adoption animal if you are interested in supporting the zoo in that way. Uh, thank you guys all so much. Appreciate you. Have a great day.